Hey, what's going on boys? Welcome to the second or third edition of Overpower Players for FIFA 20. And today we're going to be heading over to the Serie A. Awesome upgrades, position changes, and overall some nice variety. Because the last one we did, which was the Bundesliga, too many defenders. Like, I could not help it. So many players to go over. Today we've got some uh, awesome ones in the midfield, attack, defense. And if there are any players I've missed out that you think, damn, they're going to be good put it in the comment section but please leave a like if we can aim for over 1000 that'd be sweet if you're needing game codes or anything game related link in the description g2a and the last but not means least one football keep up to date with football news around the world download the app and let's get into it first one and i know it's a defender you're not going to start getting flashbacks but this is important crescito left back to center back position change and with some of his stats the pace good defending a little bit of height, he's going to be awesome for mid-tier sides, budget teams, starter teams. What a good-looking card in a centre-back position. He ticks quite a few of the boxes, and it's someone that I'm going to keep my eye on. So if you didn't know of him, leave a like. Juventus have been busy in the transfer market. With Emery Chan, though, how much game time is he going to receive? I'm not so sure. But with the card, we should expect a very nice, well-rounded CDM centre mid ticks a load of boxes and the team of the season on FIFA 19 was fantastic for the price he came down to as low as 60,000 at one point or 70,000 and I would have valued him at least a 300 to 400,000 coin player with what he was offering so I want something similar at the start of the game from Emery Chan in those budget teams what I've seen already like comparing the Serie A to the Bundesliga we've got better defenders or at least more depth in the Bundesliga and then in the midfield I want Want to hybrid it over to the Serie A or Premier League and go from there. But Emery Chan is going to be awesome. Now we're talking. Now moving over to some of the attackers. The first one is the Polar. Good season, a very good season. And one thing that you want to keep an eye out on is that position change from winger, which is pretty much unplayable with the stats, but move him into the middle and he should get released as a center forward or as a cam. That is a really good card. Shouldn't be too expensive. Just very cheap, overpowered. Awesome dribbling, playmaking, a decent amount of pace. Good finishing, I hope. This is awesome for so many reasons. Rabiot on FIFA 19 was stupidly overpowered. A load of players were using him for a while. At least two to three months into the game, you'd still see him pop up. And it's for the simple fact he offers really good height, fantastic defending and breaking up the play, pushes on and gets goals. What more do you want for someone that isn't going to be breaking the bank? And with his recent move over to Juve, and now he's in the Serie A, you're going to be able to get that chemistry link quite easy. You've got the French link as well to well, go to the Ligue 1 or the Premier League, something like that. Rabiot, it's going to be fantastic. Cannot wait to bring him into my starting. What a player this man is from Napoli. Rating-wise, what are we giving him? 82, 83, possibly 84. Are we going to go as high as that? But the playmaking that he's going to offer, the way he will carry the ball and hold on to possession, I really enjoyed the FIFA 19 Man of the Match version. The finishing, overpowered. Defending, breaking up the play. So with his card, imagine that alongside Rabiot in a 4-2-3-1 or having him as maybe a middle center mid in a 4-3-1-2. I think he's going to be able to play multiple positions and will be on the cheaper side. Overpowered? We'll find out. So everyone watching this video by now surely realizes that Sanchez is going to receive a massive downgrade for FIFA 20. But what comes with that? Worse stats, worse rating, a lot more affordable and potentially overpowered. Now, I wouldn't play him in a left wing position, although the pace of the game has slowed down, but even bringing him as a middle cam or a secondary striker alongside someone who's a, a bit more physical and can power through, just like an advanced playmaker. That is what I want from Sanchez. And I think I'm going to buy him. Another attacker that hopefully takes your fancy, it is Correa. Position change, which is going to be awesome, adds a bit more value to the card considering the pace isn't really ideal for a winger, but the playmaking, the dribbling, the shooting, the skills, you've got some fantastic variety in the Syria. To get you started in the attack especially, it's fine because there is going to be so many of these players available, the competition will just bring these player prices down. I don't think it's going to be um, one of those uh, fevers again that is going to be too expensive uh, to get you guys up and running. It was similar to FIFA 19. I was expecting player prices to be sky high. They really weren't. Maybe it's down to a lot more people willing to spend on FIFA points and get themselves like 
not so much a mega team, but something that is meeting the meta very early on because they realize if they invest a little bit, they're going to get better weekend league results and just keep ahead of the game. That's really what it comes down to. But Korea, very good looking card. It wasn't too long ago when we were speaking about the lack of real quality for starter teams or in general, just those go-to right wingers in the Serie A. They were lacking. I didn't really want to use Suso because he wasn't quick enough. Politano with the pace, the four star, four star, okay finishing, but with the playmaking he's going to provide, I think that that's going to be an awesome option. And with him being from Inter Milan, Italian, it's going to be so easy to link him up and create a hybrid. So that's someone definitely that you guys should add to your radar if you're looking to uh, put together a Serie A team. A fantastic looking midfielder to be playing alongside Emre Chan, Rabiot, you name it. Uh, Bentancourt with his overall well-balanced card good enough at defending, can carry the ball, can possibly get some goals, and his future style version on FIFA 19 was sweet. Really thought that he suited the game quite well. They gave him some maxed out like interceptions or uh, defensive stats. One of the weaker ones was marking, so we'd have to see what kind of card he receives on FIFA 20, but it's going to be something similar to that, which uh, I'm down for. Down for using him, and he's going to be so easy once again to get into a team on 4 chem. I'm trying to figure out right Right now what's best with the Serie A is it their cheap midfielders or cheap attackers because we've got another awesome CDM that's where I'd play uh, Kessie just for the fact that his dribbling won't really be that great maybe slightly clunky on the ball and then the uh, passing I think his passing is okay but it's really the defense the physical and somewhat pace that's going to be a, a good go-to cheap CDM Nice player. I did just mention a lack of wingers previously in the Serie A, now to a ton. And we've got Lozano that's not going to be that cheap, maybe 7,000 to 15,000 coins, anywhere around there. Or I could be completely mistaken and he's going to be dirt cheap and just a go-to for everybody. But with what he's offering in the Serie A, I think that's going to suit his play style. Uh, already had a good game uh, for Napoli. So the dribbling, the pace, the finishing, we've seen what he can do in the World Cup. Up, so I'm pretty sure he's going to do very well in the Serie A. Obviously, he's close to my heart being an RTG legend. Are we going to have to make that repurchase? Probably. Up next, we do have Malqui from Napoli. And not only is he French, which is awesome and very easy to link off to Ligue 1, but he gets that strong link into Lozano. He's just going to be so important for those cheapish hybrids. So that's someone that could be a very good player to trade with or just use for yourself. Going forward, very nice. He's got that ability to um, pick out a pass and just carry the ball. Defensively, might be might be a little bit weak, but for, yeah, again, the starter team, he's going to be sick. So we know Delict is going to receive a massive upgrade and he will 100% be the most expensive player in this lineup today. So I don't know if I would suggest like buying him at the start, but in terms of playability and how overpowered he's going to perform, I think even for an 85, he's going to resemble that Virgil van Dijk-esque feel. Uh, that's my prediction anyway. So the Virgil van Dijk of the Serie A, uh, Juve, so easy to link up and get chem. So his pace will be fine, playable, and then defending the physical, it's going to be a unit and very, very hard to get past. Awesome, awesome player. Zielinski, another Napoli player that's going to get himself a really nice upgrade. And you've got that triangle down the right-hand side. We also had something similar in the Bundesliga with Akanji, Fernandez as a centre mid, and also Mbabu. It's a shame that that's down the right as well. Otherwise, you could have hybrid it out and well, had Bundesliga on the left and Syria on the right. But Zielinski is going to receive a nice upgrade. Wouldn't play him as a CDM center mid. C center mid maybe, but in a cam position, pushing on, I think that's best. Theo Hernandez, he was pretty good on FIFA 19 for me personally, uh, offering the height, the strength, and just that pace, tracking up and down the pitch. Some people liked him, some people hated him. In terms of him being overpowered, I hope so. French... Syria, he's gone over to Milan. I believe he's picked up an injury though, like recently. So I don't think he's going to get any special cards anytime soon. But for a starter team, awesome. All depends on the upgrade with this one. Izzo, is he going to receive a nice amount of pace? It really depends on how he plays in game though. It might be that he does receive 70 on his card stat, but then it's a different story when you get him in game. He just is tracking across the pitch. He's getting in those tackles, which he will have. 
awesome player and there you go you've got two center backs that you've seen in today's video or three center backs that you're going to be able to get some uh, nice chemistry hopefully he plays well last one and we're finishing off with a winger Chiesa from the Serie A good pace dribbling I loved his team of the season even though he had medium to high work rates I felt with the style and he, what he was offering it just suited him so well like breaking up the play getting interceptions and then carrying the ball dribbling fantastic finishing was good as well on fifa 19 so we'll see how um his card performs but so much variety and it's going to cause everyone else just to come down so kiesa um lozano who are you going to be picking up boys and if there are any players in this lineup that you haven't seen and you think are going to be some cheap options for other people drop their names in the comment section and if you want to see a la liga version because we haven't done that one yet then drop a like and I'll see you boys on the next one. Team out, peace.